Blog Talk Radio. Hello, this is Barbara Calvano, and welcome to Let's Ask the Angels on Blog Talk Radio. Join me now for guidance and messages from the divine to support you on your path to living with mastery. Hello, everyone. It's Barbara Calvano, and welcome to Let's Ask the Angels here on Blog Talk Radio. And if you're listening live, a very special welcome, and I'll be getting to you shortly, those of you who have called in and to do readings. And that'll be in a half hour. This is an hour show. The first half, I do the readings of the month or week and share some stories, and then we do the uh, callers' uh, readings at the second half. So, just to give you a heads up. And you can listen to this on replay at Blog Talk Radio or your favorite streaming platform because I'm pretty much everywhere. So that can be Apple, Spotify, Audible, iHeartRadio, um, Amazon Music, Google Play, wherever you listen to podcasts. And again, if you're new to me, welcome, welcome. I am an angel intuitive, certified angel card reader, an oracle card reader, and also a life coach. And I've been doing this show since uh, 2013, and it has been my privilege to share information with you to help support you to live a life that you dreamed of. Now, um, if you are in the New York City area next month on October 20th, I'm going to be in person at the New Life Expo here, and um, all the information is at my website BeCalvanoCoaching.com or NewLifeExpo.com. And my talk is Sunday at 10.30 in the morning. And I will be have a raffle to give away card decks. And it will be really fun to meet you all. I've met some of my very special listeners at these type of events. And it's always something it's just really extra for me. And I hope for you also. So I'm going to be talking about creating your extraordinary life with the help of the angels. And that's basically what I've been talking about since for over 10 years or more. And it really, really dawned on me that when I say extraordinary, some people might think of, well, that means I win lotto or something like that. But what it really is about is to live a life with courage to face all the things that happen to us as human beings. And we, um, can admit that it's not easy to be human, to be a human being. I mean, what else are we going to be? But to live consciously, to live aware, to want to open ourselves up more to spirit. And if you're listening to this podcast, even today or on replay, I'm going to assert that your soul, spirit, is interested in expanding your ability to love, to feel, create, to be a better human being, all of these things. And I got into angels because of the frequency, the actual energetic vibration of angels, which is love, which is the opposite of fear and anger. So it's a simple thing. When we tune into angels, angel frequency, vibration, we're basically turning into highest level wisdom. And for some people, they get a little put off by angels. They think it's about religion, but not necessarily so. It really is frequency. Everything is energy. And when many of us are looking for answers, again, how to live with an open heart in a world where there can seem to be a lot of things um, going against us, making it difficult, How do we do all this? And even at the New Life Expo, there's going to be so many different types of healing, healing teachers that you can be exposed to. There are so many techniques and modalities that we can use. I use several myself. But I think the number one thing is the courage to know that you actually have perhaps a choice 
You have a choice to make your life better. And what I do in angel card readings or oracle readings, sometimes you get a confirmation that you are on the right path, a confirmation about where you're at, which is where you're at. And to see it, that it's done actually by a oracle card reading helps you see that it's all energy. You, you, who you are is showing up, whether it's in my card reading or a channeled session. It's how it is. It's like we are a mirror. We are mirroring our frequency, who we are. So one thing that I've done in the past four weeks, I've taken on a four-week vacation of plant medicine of essential oils, not anything crazy far out like ayahuasca or any other types of plant um, things that people are taking today to expand their consciousness. But basically pure organic essential oils, when applied to your spine, can actually wake up, activate different systems of your body. And so by for me doing this for 10 different systems of your inflammatory system, endocrine, digestive, um, I wanted to get out of the antibiotics that I had to take for one week, and uh, I wanted to clear it, but I, my, my spirit told me, take on this whole program. Well, what I'm seeing is, and that's why the topic today is trust your body, is that our experiences, how we see life, it's not just through our eyes and ears, but we are remembering in the cells of our body, in our organs of our body in the systems of our body. And that includes like a respiratory system and um, ID, infectious disease systems, protecting that for you. So we are listening to the world. We are listening to angel messages through our body, through our heart, through our brain, and through our, uh, even our hormone system, whether you're a man or woman. So I say this because For the past 12 years, one of the things I've been emphasizing is that how to really increase your ability to hear and listen to angel messages or guides and whatnot. In my opinion, in my experience, you don't have to do crazy drugs. One thing, I'm sober 34 years, so I don't try, I don't feel the need to try anything like that. But through natural, safe, slow moving, you can have these releases of past trauma, past lives, information that wants to come forward for you can be done so gently. So I've never been more a proponent proponent for what I've been doing personally and just sharing that with the world. Very, very simple techniques that we can do to help our body be clearer and more accessible to hearing and listening and therefore reacting differently in the world, which then has us make different choices, may look like an extraordinary life. So we're not stopped by our grief, our suffering, our struggles, even our illnesses. We're able to be with them with presence and awareness, and therefore it's extraordinary to be able to be present to all the uncomfortable things that we have in this world, and yet not be stopped by it. And you and I may know people who have had one incident that has occurred for them, and unfortunately, it stays stuck like a channel, like a frequency, and they're unable to switch it off. And they even get on prescription drugs, which sometimes suppresses the the emotions, so they can't feel anything, and therefore they don't truly heal it. So I'm not against prescription drugs, but there is a time and place for them. But for many of you, who are on the path of wanting to be your highest self in this lifetime, which includes connecting with angel energy, archangels, and other benevolent spirits that are available right now. It takes us um, the task of really taking care of our bodies, number one. That is like, you know, the thing about eat right and get exercise, yes, it's that. (laughs) It is that and then more. The little thing the miracle of beginning to love yourself, to take care of yourself like that, activates everything around you. Everything around you will shift when you begin to bring more oxygen into your body. The blood flow is better. 
So I am about teaching the esoteric things about angels and whatnot, but it really is basic that when you decide to honor your body, your physical body, incredible things will happen. And then also what happens for a lot of people is they start feeling. And that sometimes you don't want to feel those things. So you don't move your body or you don't take care of yourself because it may feel more comfortable to stay stuck on some level. So that is where my, my work is going to be going more forward with. And it seems, unfortunately, that more and more people are getting serious illnesses such as cancer. I don't have the exact answer to it. But I do know that when we can bring peace into our bodies, that has an enormous effect on healing the body. So I'll be talking about that at my talk at the New Life Expo. And if you're not able to come, I will be videotaping it so you'll be able to watch the replay. So I'm going to go ahead and do the readings of 4 September and I was guided to use the wild Kuan Yin. I was guided to use Kuan Yin, and then wild Kuan Yin jumped at me. And here it is, the wild Kuan Yin oracle. And what this deck is about, the energy of this deck is, this is the part of us that is attuned to nature. It is the part of us that knows how to grow without thinking about it. It is the part of us that trusts in our own inner process and timing and in the timing and the divine manifesting itself in the world through us. Wildness has instinct, instinct for rest, instinct for who and what to trust, instinct for when to let go, instinct for when to be right moment to take action. That wild self knows that life can be trusted that has its own genius and thus that even if nothing seems to be happening according to plans, we make there's always a greater plan at work. Now, it's a simple statement, but not easy to grasp that when things are not going well around us, that we could actually even believe that there's a greater plan happening for the betterment of us. But that's where we begin to look. Maybe in the work that I do, I share that having a higher power of your own understanding is very important, knowing that we ourselves did not make this whole thing up by ourselves, but we are in partnership with incredible, great energy. And a lot of things that don't look well in the world, you may ask, why are those things happening? Well, each one of us has our own karma, and we can only be responsible for our own personal karma. And when we do that, we really, really shift a lot of what's around us and in the world. That is one way to begin to make the changes you want to see, is, as they say, be the change you want to see in the world. So tuning into this part of us makes us feel peaceful, alive, and trusting in life. It allows the universe to help us more easily because we don't run from life, but instead open up to embrace it. And even when at times it seems downright mysterious or confusing, now, that says a lot because so much happens to us when something happens. It seems uh, like it's impossible to figure out even. And we may just stay angry, but not realize like we're just angry and we become like an angry person. And before you know it, we're attracting more things that make us angry. And we're like, what's going on here? So it, it really stems back to being able to see Perhaps every situation in our life, every situation in our life has a lesson to teach us. And when we can take the pause and bring some awareness into it, we might see what wants to be revealed to us. And we can truly release it and not cause those type of things to happen again around us. It takes um, a special courage. It takes a special uh, uh, diligence to want to live this way. You know, I know that in my 20s, I, I felt like a you know bat shot out of hell. I just was just going and going and going, but I didn't know I was running away from uh, childhood trauma. I didn't know that. So most of us are living with some kind of um, issue or situation that still haunts us and haunts us in a subtle way, but it may be impacting our ability to better relationships make better choices, 
So the whole thing about my work, Be Calvano Coaching, is to assist you in making better choices and having better reactions to things instead of a reaction, choosing an action. So that is why I'm here. And it actually excites me because I've seen it for myself and how it works. And I often say my age can be not nauseating for people to hear it over and over again. But, you know, at age 70, I feel creative, inspired to keep looking at things to share and to learn and to stay healthy. And I can say I'm not on any prescription drugs. I've healed myself most, mostly naturally. And uh, my husband is a chiropractor, so I believe in the alignment of the spine to bring the messages from the brain to the rest of the body. So, so much of what I do has to do with having optimal health. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. But it is knowing that it's a choice. And one thing the angels really want me to share with you is this. If someone, and I say someone because oftentimes there are earth angels around us, you might be have been given information, a message to try something. And it's so easy to like ignore it and say, no, 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 that's not for me. In this world of millions and billions of people, it is a most graceful moment when you receive a message. So I would say, research it, check it out, try it. Because the opportunity to be well in this world it's real it's possible to heal things that we thought were impossible to feel good at any age in april a few months ago i was supposed to have a hip replacement i was able to not and now my hip is fine i made different choices so there are things we can do does it take work absolutely But in the process of taking care of yourself and working, co-creating with the university angels, you see just how much power you have. The ability to even stand up to doctors and question them more and make the changes and things that you need to do to be responsible for your own happiness. So that's what it is to co-create with the angels, an extraordinary life. It is about um, being a master. And letting these archangels help you um, do it. And when I say do it, it's like instead of needing to have a hard, you know, cocktail or drink to relax, you know, we're going to like work with Archangel Metatron and Michael and and Jophiel. And before you know it, you feel great. What I mean is just having them come to your system, clear away what needs to be cleared today, just like I'm saying it. And when we practice that, you actually can sense and feel the difference in your body. So that's my thing about that. Now I'm going to go to the cards. And there are four. The first one is from the past, what we have learned. And here we go. The images are here on this page at Blog Talk Radio or at my website, again, at bcalvanocoaching.com. Because sometimes looking at the pictures gives you some new information, too. So here it is. It says Desert Harvest. And it says, many of my divine children take time to cultivate their offering to the world. Your soul, even with your fire and ambition, is capable of great patience, endurance, hope, and faith. These spiritual qualities allow for the development of a truly exceptional offering to the world. Rest assured, my divine one, it is never too late. In fact, your time for full blooming is just now starting to come into view. So the desert harvest, there's a harvest coming from the desert, even when it looks like it might be too late. I told you my age, and I'm still excited about finishing my book. Um, Dare I say there's some, some acting things that I want to do. You know, there's just... Yeah, there's things to do. Do I really want to travel the world? Not really. Perhaps visit my homeland in Japan. But there are projects I want to complete, my art project. But there are things that we can do. Absolutely. And it's never too late. And that's the message here. So this uh, divine harvest comes to you with tidings of life and fertility in the face of odds to the contrary. 
When your life doesn't seem to be moving in the right direction and you cannot find your way, you may fall prone to doubts. Spiritually speaking, you are in the desert and yearning for water. The improbable, the difficult to launch, the creative dream that seems to be ridiculous will be. And the Divine Mother will delight in another of her improbable creations, such as her irrepressible sense of play, humor, and divinely defiant will. So when you take that one step towards your dream and stay open, you know, you're going to see more messages, more signs of what to do next, like the breadcrumbs to start being dropped for you. But you've got to step out and try. And so this could be about anything, anything, healing family relationships, moving, you know, change. And I really got that change as we get older can seem so daunting, can seem so frightening, in fact. My neighbors who lived upstairs from me were here for 15 years and they moved out today. And I couldn't believe how sad I was. I said, well, they have a different uh, plan for their life. But the change of not seeing them, the change of, yeah, not seeing their presence, um, it can be huge. So change is such a part of who we are. And when we can um, become friends with it, more understanding of it, it can make things have a different perspective, and that includes the ultimate transition, which is death. Not an easy one to accept also. But this message really is about it's not too late. And uh, we're not just a desert. There is water around us. Now, the second card is tender trust, beloved body. I want you to feel at home here upon the earth. And to realize you have come here not only to serve, but to take delight, to become alive, to exercise your power of choice, to manifest a destiny that is brilliant and beautiful and perfectly suited to you. So I have given you a sacred animal, a devoted body that has offered its entire life and service to your soul growth. So we have this body we live in. And lately I've been calling this body Our home, it is our true home. Our home, we live in this body. And then we live in a house or apartment or a trailer or a boat, wherever we live. But first, we live in our body. That is our true home. And when we can start really taking a look at how comfortable are we in our home, the body that which which we are in, I'm going to say some powerful truths can start coming forward, powerful healing. And then when we do that, those two things, you become more intuitive, even psychic. But it's taking the time to face, yeah, sometimes uncomfortable emotions. So here we go. So I have given you a sacred animal, a devoted body. When you love this sacred animal, <laughs> that's us, and let him or her love you in return, then you are able to manifest your divine destiny, a radiant, vibrant expression in the world. So trusting your body, I really want you to take a look at what are the messages you've been receiving? Where do you have pain? Where is there uncomfortability? Are you working with a healthcare practitioner? Do you need to go see one? Do you fear not being able to take care of yourself? So today's message is first know that you can and you can find the means to do it. I remember in my 20s, I, one of my goals was I just want to have enough money to buy my vitamins and supplements that I enjoy taking every month. It was a big deal when I was in my 20s. And now I live that way and I take a lot of vitamins and supplements and they really do support me. And I know many people, the first thought is, well, they're too expensive. But one of the things I learned this summer is this. So many of us have been kind of brainwashed that doctors and the medical giants of this world and country are there to take care of us. Yes, some of the medicines help when we need them. But so much of us have been kind of brainwashed that we lean on them. And yet all these have side effects, incredible side effects. And we get dependent on them. And our emotional release, the uh, messages that want to come from the body get shut down. 
we just don't experience them. And then we get another disease and another illness and whatnot. So what I want to share is when I had to go get these antibiotics that I had to take for one week and I was waiting at Walgreens and I looked at the aisles and aisles and shelves of so many dead drugs. I mean, literally just things that people take. And this coincides with working with angels how when your system is more alive and open and natural and holistic, you're going to be able to intuit better. When your body is suppressed, you're just not. It's just That's the way it works, as if you get shut down. Because many of these prescription drugs, what they do is they shut down the body. And they shut, you know, they eliminate certain things, but they're not really curing you. And unfortunately, here in 2024, not all doctors know how to heal you. They know how to take care of your thing, your situation that needs a drug made by the um, pharmaceutical company, but they don't necessarily know or will take the time to walk you through healing yourself. And more and more people are realizing that they'd rather spend the money out of pocket and learn how to heal themselves because in the end, 20, 30, 40, 40, 50 years later, you're going to be free of illness. You're going to be healthy and strong. Whereas people who not necessarily took the shortcut, but they didn't understand that taking these drugs were not necessarily going to heal you in the end. They're going to suppress things in your body. So trusting your body, perhaps there's something your body's trying to tell you. And it might be forgiveness. Many, many times it's forgiveness looking at some emotion from the past. Louise Hay's book, You Can Heal Your Life, is a perfect book of information to help you see oh, what's going on with your neck, your low back, your liver, your, your ovaries, you know, if you have um, yeah, different things going on in your body. So I share this because it's what I used, what I went through, and I can attest that it can bring an extraordinary, vibrant health. And when you have your health, you have one, you have happiness and you have the ability to continue to be joyous in the world and to have the capacity to see how you can still be peaceful while there's things happening around you that are not peaceful. You can actually hold both, one in each hand. And that's capacity. That's called emotional capacity. So that is the um, the second card. So the third one is grandmother of love, granddaughter of life. You are an old soul with much wisdom in you. You know how to learn from experience and grow stronger and more loving, even through life's challenges. Trust yourself in life. You are growing now towards your divine destiny. You may need guidance to find your way through unfamiliar situations as you broaden your horizons. Now, allow those who are wise like you to be your companions as you choose now not to believe in the voices of fear. So some of us have a close connection to our grandparents, some of us not, but know that there is a loving guidance near you. Each of us has at least one or two guardian angels that have been with us forever. And when you begin to lean on them and to know that even in whatever you're going through feels like you're not, like you are, like there's nobody around, there's no hope, there is because you're still here. You have the listening for something greater and your guardian angel is with you. So a really positive message that... um, you're just never alone. And also, at any given time, you have 100,000 angels on either side and around you that you begin to call upon to help soften the load of being a human being. Do, do they um, do things for you like pay your rent and your bills? No. But they can help you see how you, how I have the capacity to do so and with joy. You know, we live in a time where it seems more and more there are things to complain about, but there's also a lot we can be grateful for. It's like 5149. Which side are you going to be on? If you go for being grateful for that little bit more, it's a tiny action that can bring so much good, so much good energy. 
here's the next card. The final one is Ancestral Guardians of Light. And here it says, my love for you is so vast. And as you learn to recognize it, you shall see me reaching for you in every person, every encounter, every circumstance, every event in your life. So we can look at this as ancestors helping us, angels helping us. Again, the love that is available to us is so vast, but we can't see it if we're only looking at the negative. Working with angel cards, working with angels helps you see, helps you experience that there is so much more than we can see with our own eyes. So you have come to this planet at my request to be a bearer of light and a way shower for others. And because you honor me in taking human form, so too shall I honor you. Look within your heart and there you shall find me. We travel together always. There is no need for you to be alone. So not only do we have the ancestors with us, there are benevolent light beings with us to help us. So again, 5149, if you are more looking at the negative, you're going to see the negative. And it's out there. We could spend hours on this podcast talking about all what's wrong in the world. And every day another thing shows up and another thing. It's not easy to keep your heart open and acknowledge that what's happening. But what we're going to learn how to do is to shield ourselves so that we don't have to absorb everything that's happening. We can witness it. But we can also see that if we take on too much of the suffering and we don't have the capacity of love inside of us, we will also um, in, in experience suffering and even more struggle within our body. And it's a process that we learn. It takes life, a whole lifetime or even lifetimes to learn how to do it. How do you have hope and for peace and happiness at the same time you see yet another tragedy thing happen in the world, right? So being close to your angels, working with them, working with specific crystals. I work mostly with my Lemurian quartz, though I have about 10 different ones here around me when I do my podcast. Learning that we are vibrational creatures, we are vibrational beings, we are um, in and around us. There's so much support, but it's not going to come to us unless we ask, unless we become partners with it. And when I say partners, learn to trust that there is good around us. And if we have had a lot of trauma, or even some trauma when we were younger, sometimes it's not easy to trust. Some of us learn how to trust by uh, having animals and pets, cats and dogs, learning through their unconditional love that we can experience that and feel it in our body. So these are the things that I do, and I wish you the very best in understanding that today's message really is that living vibrantly, living, um, yeah, vibrantly, when you listen to the message in your body and trust your body, your body's sending a message to you. And it could be you need more rest, you need this part of you examined, and then the process of going through doctors and learning how to trust them and speaking up and advocating for yourself. All of it is a healing process. All of it. And you can do it. And the Archangel Michael helps give us courage and strength to do it. Gabriel helps us find the words. Metatron helps us organize all of this within ourselves and in the physical world. So that is your message. And now I'm going to take your calls and give one card readings today. And again, it's Barbara Calvano on Let's Ask the Angels. Uh, subscribe at my email at uh, bcalvanocoaching.com to stay updated on what's happening. Hope to see many of you at the New Life Expo, October 20th here in New York City and for my talk. And yeah, so all of that is there. And if you enjoy my podcast, please share it with others. And if you've never given me a review, I'd love to have you give me a a four or five star review to show the world that it's making a difference for you. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get the cards. And again, I don't really do like readings for other people. Your question could be for yourself. Um, yeah. yeah, or I can just pull a card for you. Either way. So let me take a sip of water. 
and I'll get right to you. Okay, area code 708. What is your name and how can I help you today? Hello there. So I think we need to cancel that voice. I hear either a dog or something. All right, let's go into area code 770. What is your name and how can I help you today? Hello there. Hi, my name is Maddie. Uh, it sounded like someone was sleeping. I know. So I might go back yeah, to them, but it sounded like, I think you're right. I don't think Somebody it was a, was yeah, I don't think it was a like a hostile message, but it, you're right. It sounded like snoring. <laughs> Yeah, I think they were snoring. <laughs> the body needed rest. Anyway, all anyway right. it's all <laughs> in dreamland. I love it. I think it's great. Uh, my name is Maddie. I'm calling from Georgia. Hi um, there. Hi. I don't have a specific question because I have so much going on in my mind. Okay. But I had a revelation today that Mm. Uh, I live here in Atlanta, Georgia area. I don't know. I had a revelation today uh, driving and on my way home, and I thought, I don't think I want to live in Atlanta anymore. I think I want to live somewhere where it's more exciting. <laughs> and I don't know why <laughs> London came to mind. Mm. <laughs> mm. I visited there once, and that was it. And I say, why London? It's just somewhere more exciting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you well, know. Well, interesting energy, because I, energy, yeah, Atlanta I was like, Atlanta had been the new New York for a while because everything was, you know, moving to Atlanta was supposed to be the thing. But, you know, Jim, do some research. See what, see how that goes for yeah, you. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, Atlanta has, they have, uh, they do a lot of mo- movies here yeah. and the studios and all of that. But it's just not, mm. uh down the downtown area, you just don't have the walkability mm. uh, energy okay. going on, like the the ocean and all of that. Yeah. Mm. Well, interesting. Yeah, let's. I'll pull this card out. for you. It's a nice yeah. City. Yeah. Uh huh. Very interesting. Yeah. I mean, I like yeah. the castles and all that, and the the farmlands and whatnot. You know. I just yeah, uh, a lot of lot yeah. of lot of lot of small farms. That's for sure. So here's something for you, Maddie. I got the from the Angel Wisdom deck by Radley Valentine. I have the lovers for you here. It says embrace true love. Yeah, lovers. Embrace true love and deep, intimate friendships. Make choices from the heart. Vibrant health or recovery from an illness. So that's we, we have Archangel Raphael on this card. And um, I don't know if you're married or you have a partner already, but um, maybe... You know, in terms of uh, wanting to move to London, is just there's something in your heart. Here it is, heart healing. You got, you, we definitely have Raphael here. Relationships about having better relationships, an exciting relationship, a new relationship, or making mm-hmm. a relationship better. So it really is about your heart. I love this because it is from your heart that you have this yearning, you know, for something, for a change, right? Um, Yes. And um, maybe it's because of you've gone through a vibrant health or recovery from a situation or illness. But I love this card because it is about embracing love in the world, embracing what you love in the world, not just living day day to day. You know, like it's like a wake up. It's like a. Yeah. Yeah. It's an awakening. If you have your heart is awakened, like. There's more. There's just more I want from life, you know? So that's what I see here yeah. for you, you know? Oh, I love that. I Isn't love that. Great? That's exactly how I've been thinking. Yeah. I've been feeling that. It's like, mm-hmm. it's, it's, uh, it's so much. Um, in fact, I mentioned to a friend the other day, uh, I said, I don't know. I said, I said, you know what? I would love to do a... Um, a subconscious regression, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. deep into my subconscious, and see what's really going on, and mm-hmm. how much power do I really have? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Does that make well, sense? Yeah. Well, I did a past life regression 
back in 1986. Now that's a long mm-hmm. time ago, but in that um, I I saw I saw my future husband. I saw his energy, and I didn't know what I was going to see in my past life regression. I saw something about my mother and whatnot. But the biggest thing was like, oh, I see this light, and I'm pretty sure that's my future husband, and he is in New York City. It's just a matter of me. All right, I say yes to that. And then just listen for what the universe wanted me to do next. And it was at that time to go to these healthy single parties at the limelight. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's not what I do. But I went. And uh, in the course of like seven weeks, I met him. So you can see energies. One of the things some people see more 3D than others, but you definitely have the opportunity to see what what wants to come forward in your life. And in my heart's heart, I kind of thought I wanted to get married. But when I saw that, I said, no, it confirmed that the person exists and was out there, which anyone could say, of course, a person exists. Yeah. But it confirmed mm-hmm. for me in my, in my body, in my heart. Like, and between you and me, Matt, Matt, Maddie, when I saw him, I said, that's the energy I saw in my past life regression. I didn't tell him that. <laughs> right. You know. Wow. So Interesting. It, it is with a good practitioner, you can see a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they, it shouldn't cost an arm and a leg. It's just a modality. And uh, yeah, it's definitely, if you're called to do that, I would start researching that. Oh, and my person that I used was from London. Isn't that interesting? She was British. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So go for I, it. Yeah. I um I know one young man and I think he lives in Tennessee mm-hmm. that does that um, okay. subconscious regression mm-hmm. uh, sessions and uh, and I thought hmm I've listened to him a few times and I said mm-hmm. hmm, maybe mm-hmm. I should check him out to see mm-hmm. what he can uh, bring up within me that's buried deep mm-hmm. that's all that stuff that's buried deep yeah. yeah so you saw the you saw your husband. Uh, mm-hmm. So, in other words, you said that that's why you were in New York. Well, I came to New York right after college, and uh, uh-huh. I was a mod- modern dancer and artist here And uh, oh, at age 20, 28, and it wasn't until like I was age 35 that I was ready to settle down. <laughs> so that's when I, right. when I met him. And right. then I'm, I'm, married, I'm married now 35 years. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So that's Beautiful. my story. No, I have mm-hmm. to go to the next caller, but okay, I wish I'm you the, the best. The yeah, and make yourself pr- take little actions, and you'll be surprised at what you see. Okay, okay. thank you for calling. Thank you. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Okay, the next caller is area code 850. What is your name, and how can I help you today? Hello there. Oh, hello. Thank you so much for taking my call. This is Michelle from Florida. Hi, Michelle. Hey, um, well, I just wanted to ask, when is it going to stop? I got, I basically divorced my boyfriend after 11 years because of his drug use. And I just found out, I didn't know what he was telling people because none of his family or anybody has contacted me. You know, in my heart, I told him he needed help, but I I told him I didn't want him back until he went to recovery. But anyways, he's going around telling people that that home and he brought me some pain medicine, and it wasn't enough, so I told him to leave. And Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my God, I cannot believe he's telling people this. It's just like I am just so shocked. It's like when's it going to stop? It's like I'm so ready to find somebody new, and I didn't think I would ever want to find somebody new, but I'm at the point where I I could never be with somebody like that, that that you would be so evil and vindictive, right. you know what I mean? Okay. And it's like, so here's you know, the, here's I'm so the, ready right. for happiness. Okay, so here's the deal. You, the, the fact that, number one, you're ready. Because you could, you could call in and say, I never want to be with somebody again. But you in your heart says, I, I'm ready for a change. So if you listen, what I'm, I'll share with you is this. Um, I'm guided to share this. I'm 34 years in recovery from alcohol. So I went to AA, and I needed to learn that it was not about the alcohol, but it was about 
something I was searching for. And there's a lot of anger in me from my childhood. And I was bringing that into my wonderful new marriage. And I just shared about getting married, right? So I, there, I don't know. I'm going to put you on mute because I hear a little extra noise in the background. I don't know if you ever tried yourself to look at addiction issues. Have there been any in your own family? Did you ever look at any of the 12-step programs, including Al-Anon, for people who have been in a relationship with people who have an, an addiction? And I only mention it is that it is angel work in its of itself that we learn how to deal with situations like what you described. You actually learn because other people go through the same thing. So it will stop it. All of this drama will stop when you can see some things also about yourself that maybe how you were okay with it for so many years, but now you are done, you are finished. But in order for you to have this kind of drama uh, relationship complete, you know, out, it's going to take some, um, it's going to take some like, energetic action on your part. It's, I can't say it's going to be done by December 1st, but in your heart's heart, if you went to an Al-Anon meeting in person or an online, or I don't know if you ever had any addiction issues yourself, it's something to take a look at. I'm going to open up your call again. And here is the card I chose for you. It describes you as passionate, confident, charismatic, restless, Events requiring immediate action. So, you know, the angels want you to take immediate, immediate action on this. You take immediate action on this. Trust your instincts. Stay focused on what you want, not what you don't want, but mostly on what you want. You want peace. You, you want, like, you can say no drama, you know, and a passionate relationship. I love this for you. So you want a passionate relationship, but not one that's crazy, right? So... Right. And no, I, I've never been an addict. Okay. I've worked in a drug rehab. I've worked okay. in a drug rehab. You know? So you know this. But. Okay, so you know about rehabilitation. So the person may, my brother-in-law, who still, he, in a sense, he's an addict and an alcoholic, but he would say he's not. But he's basically is destroying relationships all around him in the family, right? So it's yeah. really painful to be with someone you love and you once loved say really nasty things about you. This person said such mean things about me. It made me physically ill. I I was like, wow. And that's when I had to see this. Some people are not going to get well. They're going to keep saying what they're going to say. So the best thing I needed to do is learn how to just do my life. They are going to run their racket. They're going to go down their tunnel. They're going to just do, they're going to do what they're going to do and has nothing to do with us. It has to do with their own disease. And I only can learn that when I go to a meeting and I'm with other people who have gone through it. So that's what I share my experience with you. They're going to keep doing it. It's, not, it's for us to like become immune to it to the best that we can and uh, get it, just move on in life and really see they may most likely never change. This may be the card they have chosen for life. So it's up to us to choose happiness, you know, and pray for them, but keep our distance and move on. Does that make sense? Yes. Yep. And the sooner you do that, and and I'm saying, going to meetings, you don't even have to share. You can do them online. You can you can see and hear how people are doing it. But well, it is, I, I, I know what you're. Yeah, I know what you're saying. You know, I, I've tried moving on, and it's like, mm-hmm. and then when you hear somebody tell you they ran into him, and he's telling another friend that, yeah, you know, what I'm saying it's like that's not what happened. I left him because of his drug use. Exactly. He's trying to say it's me. You know, so I was what, like, oh yeah, wow, I just couldn't you, believe if, it. Yeah. So if you've worked in a rehab, then you understand one thing about addicts: they are not well. They are basically insane. So we are talking about a crazy person who's babbling and saying stuff. Some of it may be true, but most likely it's not. But they are going to do and they are going to do crazy. They're going to say their things. That's what they're going to do. So I live in New York City. If I were to, you know, it's like I would understand if I see a crazy person on the subway or on the street. They are really crazy. 
So same thing with my brother-in-law. He's not going to, for a while, I said, well, come on. Would you like to get help? You want to do this and that? And it was like, absolutely not. So he's, he may have crossed over the line, and his brain has already been, um, the line's been crossed where he can't get well. But that's not any, that's not your issue. What you want to do, it's going to be done when you say it's done. And you focus on, you focus only on what you can control. And the only thing you can control is yourself and your life. And again, this person, listen, my person told me that everybody hated me and my family. How do you think that made me feel? You know, I mean, and, and even more, more garbage, right? So it's up to me to be yeah. responsible, to take care of how am I going to live? I'm going to let this person who's really insane, his brain has done too many, experienced too much trauma from drugs and alcohol. This, this, that's what, and be okay with it. It's the best of my ability. Well, it's like part of me wants to defend myself, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, one of the things we learn as we get older, you have only so much energy. You have so much energy. Yep. And, and when you protect your special life energy and you, you decide, I'm not giving one ounce of my energy towards that. I'm just not. I'll pray for you from a distance, but I'm praying for myself first. Put the oxygen mask on yourself first. So these are tiny, tiny practices you learn when you go to a 12-step program and to meetings. Again, you may not be doing the drugs or alcohol, but... People who have been in relationships with these type of people, we did it because of the energy. There was something there. We didn't know. But now then you realize you are not that energy, right? Yes, I'm not. So you get to say, I'm done with that energy. What are the practices I can do today to strengthen my energy so that I am what I want to be, whether it's peaceful, loving, gentle, and not give a rat's blank about what people say about me you can strengthen yourself and you're that's going to take some work for you to do and according to this card you have that ability to do so right there, it's not about when they're going to stop it's when you're going to stop letting it bother you this situation may have come into your life to help you become stronger it's not fun but that's what we got today all right and you can do it all right this is time, you know, um, yeah, you can do it, but you can't do it alone. It's much easier to do with other people. Yeah, that's all I can say. Most of these, anything that we're dealing with in the world is so much easier to do when we are with a community of people. And there's so many of us wanting to heal away from stuff like that. And the last thing I'm going to do is let this brother-in-law who just, I let him like, I mean, I was physically ill from this, right? I couldn't go to a family gathering because of, of his lies and everything. And, and today I realized he's not changing. He most likely will just, you know, this will be his life. So I, I just need to like, if I want to see my nephew and, you know, and I want to see parts of my family, I'm just going to step forward and do it. I'm not going to be scared of this person, you know. So I'm dealing with it too. Right. I'm dealing with it too. So I know you can do it. You decide that today's the day. All right, my friend? Thank you so much, dear. You are so welcome. Good luck with everything. Okay, then next. You. You're so welcome. All right. All right, next caller is area code 519. What is your name and how can I help you today? Hello there. There we come on. Hello there. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi there. My name's Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. I, I'm calling about, like, health-wise, what mm -hmm. I, I don't seem to be helping myself. Okay. Um, so I'm just wondering if I can get an angel card on that. Okay. You, do you want to share what the issue is or not, the health issue? Or um, I, I I'm not, I know what I need to do, but mm -hmm. it's like I self-sabotage myself. Mm -hmm. And we all do that. Is it with your weight or what is it with? Uh, uh, what are exercise. Looking at? Okay. Um, yeah. So, you know, I'm going to pull a card for you, but one of the things I think we do is we want uh, immediate results real fast. It's perfectly normal to sabotage yourself. Like nobody's going to do it. Nobody does it perfect. You know, it's one thing. 
like I talked about AA, I talked about alcohol. Um, they do that one day at a time. So when you see your work with yourself one day at a time, you know, that will, might be helpful. It's just one, it's, not, it's progress, not perfection. Um, when you do something with a buddy or a group, it makes it friendlier, like, you know, it's not such a big deal. Um, who no, Maybe you want to find an exercise that's more fun, you know. You might want to see maybe you're doing trying to do too much too fast. You know, sometimes people want these results, and it's like not, it's just not doable. It's not fun for your body even, right? So um, take a look at all that. And I don't know when the last time was that you were able to have a massage, you know, like someone put their hands and just work out the kinks in your body and help move the energy, little things like that. I'm going to pull the card and see what it says, but I'm really sensing that, you know, you may be fighting with your body versus um, uh, making friends with it. Um, Mm, Okay. You know, I don't know if you need to lose. I know some women, men have used OA for eating disorders. I don't know if you're eating too much, eating the wrong things. Do you need a nutritionist? Do you need to have your blood work done to see if there's something out of balance with that? You know, I don't know if you have a professional you're working with. Um, you might want to look at who, you, who, do you have anyone on your team? Do you have a, an acupuncturist or do you work with your medical doctor with this, right? It, mm-hmm. it is not an easy thing to do. But the more you feel like, hey, this is a human being issue. Nobody does it perfectly, and, you know, but is it like I have a friend who over the course of the past 25 years, he's lost and put on 100 pounds back and forth, back and forth, 100 pounds. And finally, you know, he had to go for that operation where they did tight his tubes or they did a did a something inside where a band so he can't eat too much. Mm-hmm. And that seems to work for him. And he does CrossFit, which I would just hate. But this, that's really <laughs> heavy duty training. Like, please not. So I'm like I'm 70. I still try to do hot yoga. And I'm, lately I'm letting myself be OK with being 70. It's like that's my lesson. It's OK to be 70. I don't have to keep trying mm-hmm. to be 50. And even though I'm strong and healthy, it's okay to just admit admit your age and to know that easy does it is a better way than trying too hard. So here's your mm. card is says okay. intelligent you are intelligent, impartial, respected, stoic, receiving wise advice, could be from me today or maybe someone else. Remain <laughs> objective and fair minded, public speaking. I don't know if you think about that or you do that. Communicate clearly. Unemotional relationships are being emotionally unavailable. So there's something about emotions here. So sometimes when we work on another part of ourselves, the other part gets better. So if you've ever thought about speaking more, doing public speaking, maybe take an improv class, an acting class. Do something that's fun, that moves your energy. And that might give you the drive to do the other things. Does that make sense? And we focus on um, one actually, thing. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. It's funny you said that because I do have a public speaking engagement on the 22nd of this month. I love it. Okay, my dear. I love this. <laughs> I love this. So you may have a concern about what you look like or how you feel. So I would just I have to cut the show short so that I can easily oh, replay it. But, um, yeah, this is really that it's basically to stop worrying so much. Stop worrying so much and have fun. Enjoy that you are a public speaker, that you do communicate clearly and have fun with that and beautify who you are already and let the other stuff stuff start falling into place. Does that make sense? It's just like give it a break. Thank you so much. <laughs> give it a break. Yeah. Okay. All right, my dear. <laughs> right. Take care. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you, everyone, for being here today and Uh, I will see you next week or so. Um, Have a beautiful, beautiful evening. And thank you for calling in. Thank you for listening.